Protection with Blessings. Mangala Sutta. By Venerable Uttamo Thera. 33. Realizing Nibbana. The 32nd blessing is seeing the noble truths, and 33rd realizes Nibbana. So, what are the differences between them? Seeing the noble truths is the four path knowledge. These are, the path knowledge of a stream enterer, the path knowledge of a once returner, the path knowledge of a non-returner and the path knowledge of an arahant. At the time of thoroughly penetrates the four noble truths and the path knowledge arises. Realizing Nibbana is the four fruitions, phalas. These are, from the stream enterer to the arahant. After the path knowledge, maga nana, and follows by fruition. It is without delay, akalika. According to the conditional relations, pathana, it is anantara pakaya, proximity condition. This becomes evident by direct yogi's experience. But some scholars take it as has to wait for sometimes in the future. To acquire for the proficiency has to develop it for sometimes like jhanas. For other dharmas has to wait for sometimes in the future, e.g., the result of dana. The attainment of fruition, phala samapati, is meditative attainment. A noble disciple can enter into supramundane absorption, lokutara jhana, with nibbana as an object. To experience the bliss of nibbana here and now. The attainment is reached by resolving, adhithana, to attain fruition and then developing in sequence beginning with the knowledge of rising and fall, impermanence. In a Dharma talk by a teacher who mentioned seeing Nibbana, it's the real cessation of the Kanda and also can be checked. Sitting in front of a Buddha statue and resolve. Because after the path knowledge, come the fruition. Therefore, the yogi can enter into fruition state, phalasamapati. Lord, let me discern the cessation of the candor again, and makes an hour of resolution and sits there. It starts again from rise and fall, impermanence. But the rise and fall process is not becoming increase or decrease as before, i.e., before the path knowledge arose in practice. Discerning, seeing, rise and fall for sometimes and it stops happening but don't satisfy with it. Testing for another one and a half hours, and then two hours, three hours, etc. By increasing the period with resolutions. If it's real, you'll attain it. If it's fake, then you can't attain it. Instead, it becomes worse. With more testing and it becomes more significant. The yogi's in and out breaths are cool with the body. People around him are bitten by mosquitoes, but not the yogi in the fruition state. Because of kalesa smell and people are bitten by mosquitoes. Life is a very heavy burden, physically or mentally. When people are becoming older and older, sick, or near death, even become clearer. The mental burden comes from our daily life welfare and for others. These kinds of mental burden are quite a lot and it will never end. Life also has a lot of disturbances and never peaceful. Then, Sariputta, after his enlightenment, wanted to put down this body as soon as possible. In samsara, he never had real peace and happiness because of the kanda. He said that even better to carry around the Mount Meru on his back than the kanda. Because when the time comes for the destruction of the world, everything is disappeared. Thag. 81 and Komi. But not the Kanda burden and Dukkha for living beings who still have Kalesas. Therefore, for all noble beings, from the Buddha to Sotapanna, when they had free time preferred to stay in the fruition. They can put down their Kanda burdens for sometimes accordingly to their levels. 
In one of Mogik Sayadaw's talks on the truth of cessation, Niroda Saka, one is Vivikata, the peaceful nature of Nibbana. Sayadaw said as follows, If observing the mind and body with Nayan eye, they are in chaos with impermanence. Nayan is in Burmese for knowledge. Nana. But if observing Nibbana, it's totally clear without anything. Showing it with the practice, it becomes clearer. For example, if we do the contemplation on feeling, Vedananupasana, mind, chitta, and dharmas are also included. The lifespan of feeling is only one and two. At one it arises and at two it disappears. Asking to contemplate feeling is giving a designation only. One has to contemplate its impermanence. Feeling arises on the body, and one has the contemplative mind in the heart. At the time of contemplation, it is not there. To discern anaka vipassana has to be put effort, has to think and has to be mindful. Therefore, the matter of seeing anaka is necessary to be worked hard and tiresome. At Nibbāna you must answer as it's not tiresome. At the time of seeing anaka is seeing the chaos. A place without chaos is Nibbāna. With the more mature of insight and it becomes seeing more anaka and chaotic. There is no need to say about seeing Nibbāna if we can't discern the chaos of anaka and even can't speculate about it. After discerning more and more anaka, the yogi is becoming more wearisome. Only that the mind develops into the knowledge of not wanting it. At the time the yogi can decide for it as real dukkha, then suddenly it ceases with a blip. With the disappearing of kalesa that anaka disappears. And then the path knowledge sees the clearance, or emptiness. It's not the mind cutting of kalesas, but the path factors, i.e., the Noble Eightfold Path. The mind includes a co-nascence condition, Sahajatapakaya. Don't take Nibbāna as seeing nothingness. The dying out of Kalesas has the nature of good-looking. The nature of well-being will be attained after the Paranibbāna, the passing away of an Arahant. Here Sayadaw referred to Kalesa Nibbāna and Kanda Nibbāna. If we look at the 31 realms of existence, we will only find out the chaos of Anaka made by Kalesa. Nibbāna is free from the chaos of Kalesa that it has the nature of clearance of things. Nibbāna doesn't have the kind of mind and body we have. If we ask, is it body or mind? You can answer it as the mind Dharma, Nama Dharma. It's not the mind of arising and passing away. It was the place for a practicing yogi to arrive there. This is the place where the Dharma is leading to it. They have to incline towards it. Our mind inclines towards the sense objects. For the mind Dharma of Nibbāna, others have to incline towards it. For the attainment of cessation, Nirodha Samapati, the yogi's mind can incline towards it for seven days. Sayadaw gave a simile for this. In Mandalay Ze Cho Bazaar, at the center of it is a clock tower. It was like this clock tower, from whichever direction the car came, had to look at it. In the same way anyone had arrived there he could not shun away from it. This is the best of the best. At every free time, noble beings used to incline towards it. Why is that? To have peace and comfort. It can give peace and comfort that the place of happiness. Therefore, you can call it as happiness. Every worldly matter gives dukkha, because of the three universal characteristics. But Nibbāna has the characteristic of happiness, peace and joy. Nibbāna has the body or not. If it has the body and must have to be changed. How could it be without the body? Without any form and sign, but the yogi experienced it with happiness. This is still having the kanda, i.e., 
when the yogi is still alive. It is a very significant place. So, Nibbana is the holiest element. If without Dukkha, the worldlings must also like it. This was the best for the Buddha. Therefore, there is nothing better than that. One of the most important things to understand the Buddha Dharma is we cannot take the indirect meanings as direct meanings and vice versa. Especially the teaching on Nibbana is very difficult to understand. Because it is the supramundane Dharma, which cannot be expressed in language directly, therefore, the Buddha and enlightened beings only could describe it with metaphors or metaphorical terms. So, we have to bear in mind this important point. If not, with our ideas and views, it can create wrong views about Nibbana. We can see them in the history of Buddhism developed from this point, even from the Buddha's time to the present day. These were 62 kinds of wrong views in the discourse of Net's view. Most of them came from practice and misinterpreted their experiences. Practicing with wrong views cannot develop the path. In search of Nibbana. The following extraction is from a talk by Mogik Sayadaw on Nibbana. It is interesting for contemplation. In the Kanda, there are two noble truths. The physical body or matter, rupa, is like fuel dukkha saka, the noble truth of suffering, and perishable. Greed, loba, is like fire samadaya saka, the noble truth of the origin of suffering, and also perishable. Therefore, we can't rely on them. The Buddha was asking the Rohitasa Devata to look for Nibbana in this two-armed length body, or fathom long body. One found nothing but the perishable Dharma. Matter, Rupa, is body aggregate. Greed, Loba, and path factors, Magunga, are aggregate of mental formation, Sankarakanda. These are not free from the Kanda. In this Kanda, only found the three noble truths, and not included Nibbana. We can't find Nibbana here. Why? Because Nibbana is not connecting with the Kanda. If Nibbana is in the Kanda, then it will be perishable. But the Buddha taught that the Four Noble Truths existed in the Kanda. Therefore, it is certain that Nibbana is not mixed up with the perishable Kanda. Then it will exist outside the Kanda. Even the Kanda perishes, it doesn't. So, it is stable Nibbana, Duva Nibbana, and happy Nibbana, Sukha Nibbana. Not everyone can see it. Only for someone who learns the method from a teacher and practice will see it. By not wanting the Kanda when it ceases and you will see it. After that, it becomes one's property. If you know, Dukkha Saka thoroughly will realize Nibbana. It doesn't mix up with Dukkha Saka that it must be Sukha Saka. Then it will be only peaceful when you attain it. For a practicer, by not wanting the Kanda Dukkha Saka and in a blip the Kanda disappears and Nibbana arises. Something is leaving behind not connecting with the Kanda. It will arise only without this Kanda. For the practicer, his mind stays with the imperishable. The reason we do not find Nibbana cannot move away from the things covered on it. It exists as external nature, not as an internal nature, i.e., in the Kanda. Nibbana is very strange Dharma. By searching outside the Kanda also you can't find it, i.e., not searching at the right place. For example, the story of Rohitasa Devata, and the Buddha taught him to find in the Kanda. It existed in the fathom long body. But it does not exist in the internal and external of the Kanda, Ajjata and Bahida. Why don't we attain Nibbana? Because we are taking affection in the perishable nature of the things, e.g. to one's own Kanda, family members, belongings, etc. 
only you'll attain it by not wanting the perishable things. Asking you to contemplate impermanence is let you know about the perishable dharma, phenomena. First, it has to discern impermanence, anaka. Second, you have to disenchant with it. Third, discern the ending of it. If you want the perishable things, you will only get them. By not wanting, you will get the imperishable dharma. If you find out the perishable, you will get the trace to nibbana. By following to the ending of perishable, you will find the imperishable nibbana. At last, I want to present the teaching on nibbana from the dharma talks given by Sayadaw Dr. Nandamalabhi Vamsa. Not complete translations, only extractions. These are very interesting, and most of them are from the suttas. There were two kinds of dharma we could find in some suttas. These are, conditioned phenomena, sankata dharma, and unconditioned phenomenon, asinkata dharma. The meaning of sankata is, san equals by causes, kata equals the products made by the combination of causes. Therefore, asinkata means, dharma, i.e., nibbana, not made by causes. The Buddha using both of them in the suttas. Using them together was in the Abhadhamma. This was in the Dharma Sangani, the first book of Abhadhamma. Sankata is conditioned phenomena and Asankata is an unconditioned phenomenon. Sankata Dharma is the five aggregates, Kandas. The whole cosmos is the five Kandas. So, the human being is the same. These were explained in general by the Buddha. The wholesome and unwholesome dharmas are in the Sankhata. These are the four realms, sensuous plane, kamabhum, fine material plane, rupabhum, immaterial plane, arapabhumi, and supramundane, lokutara, i.e. path knowledge consciousness and fruition consciousness. Free from the causes is Nibbana, Asinkata. In the Asinkata Samyutta, Samyutta Nikaya, e.g., SN.43.1, Kayagata Satasatim, the Buddha called Asinkata as the cessation of Raga, lust, dosa, hatred, and delusion, moha. Here, it may cause confusion because the cessation of lust, Hatred and delusion is also called the path knowledge. The cessation of them is showing the causes. The abandonment is defilement, kalesa, and taking the object is nibbana. All the path knowledge and fruitions, from Sotapati Magga to Arahata Magga, are taking nibbana as an object. By taking nibbana as object and kalesa also ceases. Therefore, there are levels of Nibbāna and cessation levels of Kalesa. In the Kosambi Sutta, from Sotapāna, stream enter, to Anagaman, non-returner, are only seeing Nibbāna. It was like seeing the water inside the well by going downwards and still not touching the water yet. Only the Arahant is touching the water and abandoning all Kalesa. We can see Nibbāna only with the path knowledge and fruition knowledge. Therefore, Nibbāna is very difficult to see it because everyone is inside the province of Sankhāta. It can also be guessed by inferring, Anumāna. In the Jambukadaka Samyatam, e.g., S.N. 38.1, Nibbāna Panhasatam, Ven. Sariputta also said that the cessation of lust, hatred and delusion was Nibbāna. There are no causes to produce Nibbāna. It does not arise by kama, mind, temperature and nutrient or sense door and sense object. These are the causes for the body and mind. They do not produce it. Path and fruition consciousness are also in the five khandhas. But they are not in the clinging kanda, i.e., upadanakanda. Clinging kanda is dukkha. 
Nibbana is the cessation of clinging kanda, or dukkha nirodha, the cessation of dukkha. The cessation of the causes is nibbana. Nibbana is the cessation of both dukkha and samadaya, dukkha and its origin, i.e., tana. Therefore, it can divide into two kinds as the cessation of cause and result, i.e., kalesa and kanda. As examples, two elements of nibbana. 1. The nibbana element with the residue, sa upadasesa nibbavanadatu. 2. And the nibbana element without the residue, anupadisesa nibbavanadatu. For these two nibbanas took the example of the Buddha. When the Buddha gained enlightenment at the time of under the body tree was the first kind of nibbana element, i.e., the destruction of kalesas, but the physical body was still there. At the old age of 80, after he passed away and there was no more kandas in the future, it was the second kind of nibbana element. We can also explain it with the three rounds of existence, three vatas. These are Kalesa Vata, Kama Vata and Vipaka Vata. They are connections between cause and result. Without Kalesa and Kama cannot function. And without both of them and no Kandas arise. The cessation of them is Nibbana. The living being is the five Kandas. If without Kandas and there is nothing to call about it. But we cannot say Nibbana has nothing. Kandas really exist. But their existence and Nibbana are not the same type. If there is becoming, then also there is no becoming. Without becoming that there are no beginning and end. Therefore, Nibbana has no beginning and end. With the only becoming, you will have them. For example, if you have a wound and it is painful. After taking treatment with medicine, it is cured and no wound and pain anymore. Therefore, the wound and pain disappear is really existed. So, Nibbana is this kind of existence. Therefore, Dukkha exists and Dukkha disappears also exist. If we are thinking about it with craving, Tana, no one will want it. Because there is no becoming. People are craving for becoming. Therefore, they do not desire for the peaceful element of not becoming. Also, in the Kosambi Sutta, the Buddha said, Bhavanirodho Nibbanam, the cessation of becoming is Nibbana. Bhava, existence or becoming is the combination of three rounds of existence, three vatas. These are, wanting, tana or kalesa, action, kama, and getting, kanda, equals existence or dukkha. So, it is the same as, dukkha nirodho nibbanam, the cessation of dukkha is nibbana. Therefore, with the stopping of the causes and the cessation of the effect, result, comes into being. If we contemplate them and it becomes very profound. These are in gist. If we understand dukkha, and we will understand nibbana. If we know existence, bhava, and we know nibbana. The Buddha also taught it in detail. Because people could think about it from the points of Sankhata. Therefore, he gave examples of it had no four great elements, Mahabhuta Rupa, without the mind, Nama, etc. In ancient India, some took the immaterial jhanas, Arupa jhanas, as Nibbana. There is neither coming, nor going, nor staying. Some Buddhists had these ideas. There are also some in the Udana Pali, the Buddha's exclamations. In one of the suttas, the Buddha said, There is, monks, an unborn, a jata, unbecome, unmade, unfabricated. If there were not that unborn, unbecome, unmade, unfabricated, there would not be the case that emancipation from the born, become, made, fabricated would be discerned. But precisely because there is an unborn, unbecome, unmade, 
unfabricated, emancipation from the born, become, made, fabricated is thus discerned, verbatim of verse at Udana 81. Other teachings on Nibbana were, Vinanam Anidasanam, Anantam Sabato Pabam. Vinana Anidasanam is translated by Ajahn Thanissaro as consciousness without feature. The usage of this consciousness is significant because except in two places in the texts, we cannot find it anywhere. These were in the Kevata Sutta, Dn. 11, Digga Nikaya, and Brahmani Mantanika Sutta, Mn. 49, Majima Nikaya. People were interpreting it differently, that became mistaken about it. Only we know it rightly by consulting with other suttas. Vinana is the knowing mind. The consciousness here was, Nibbana could be known only with this significant consciousness, and not by others. Anidasanam here was, not like seeing with the eye. It does not have the beginning and end, ananta. This word, Sabato Pabam was used in many books on Nibbana differently. In the commentary Pabba means port. To Nibbana, there are ways. As like many ports. These are referring to the 38 ways of meditation, sometimes as 40 types. It can be entered from many sides. In the sub-commentary, Pabam referred to the light. It means Nibbana has light. The problem is, light is matter, rupa. If Nibbana has light, and then it becomes matter. These are metaphorical terms and we cannot take it directly. Nibbana does not have the defilement of delusion, moha, it referred to darkness. So, it has the nature of no darkness. In the simile of the Vipers discourse, i.e., Asavijapama Sutta, SN 35. 238. Salayatana Samyata, Nibbana was referred to as the other shore. This was also a metaphorical term. Nibbana has to be taken as the cessation of Dukkha and its origin, i.e., Kandas and Kalesas. So, Nibbana is the ending of Sankhata. It is not changing from Sankhata to Asankhata, not a changed element. It was like a wound grew out and cured. If, come from changing and it becomes of the arising Dharma. It is without Anaka that there is no beginning nor end. A few days before he passed away, Mogik Sayadogyi gave a talk on Nibbana and the practice. I translated it as, our simile for Nibbana. I don't know the origin of the simile. It could be from the Buddha himself. This simile of Nibbana looked very simple, but it is profound and easy to understand the nature of Nibbana with its practice. Therefore, I want to give an outline of this talk for contemplation. The main important point in studying the Pali canons, Pitakas, is to know the three universal characteristics of phenomena. Teaching on the 28 matters, Rupa, are impermanent, Anaka. The 53 minds are impermanent, i.e., 52 mental factors plus 1 consciousness, Setasikas and Chitta. 45 years of the Buddha Dharma were focused on impermanence. At the end of the impermanent phenomena, one will discover the cessation of the phenomena, i.e., Nibbana. Don't be with too many dharmas and teachers. It can't be deviated from the Buddhist path by following this way. We need to change the worldling eye to the noble eye. The eyes given by the parents were for the matters of living and eating, not for the realization of Nibbana. With the noble eye, one will get the noble view. This view is pure and not mixed with defilements. Whatever situations which the noble beings, here refers to arahants, were in, their minds were unshaken, free from attachment. One will get the noble eye and its right view by discerning of impermanence.
This is the teaching for becoming a stream enter. Sayadaw explained the five functional path factors and how it connected in practice. Right view and right thought can't be separated. They are like the eyes and glasses. No right thought can't get right view. When discerning of Anaka had these two wisdom factors and the other three samadhi factors. Mindfulness reminds yogi to look at here and samadhi turns the mind straight towards the object. Right effort pushes the mind towards the object of Anaka. Therefore, when seeing Anaka the yogi gets the path factors. Mind can be alive one only. Therefore the yogi sees his own death. It can't be shown with the dimension, but it can be sensed. Knowing the existence and non-existence, i.e., arising and passing away, is the view of the Noble One. This is the view of purity. In the whole rounds of existence, we, most beings, had seen other people's death, but never had seen one's own death. With the Noble Eyes, the Yogi sees his own impermanent, Dukkha, not self, loathsome, asubha, and the truth of Dukkha. Even the Brahma gods can't see their own deaths. The yogi will become disenchanted with his candor by seeing his own death moment to moment. At the time of not wanting all these deaths and his candor disappears. Then the yogi sees the place of no deaths. The cessation of the kanda is Nibbāna. Sayadaw talked about Nibbāna. Dāna, Sīla and Samātha practices are for dying, because not free from rounds of existence, with the Vipassāna Magga Dharma get the undying Nibbāna. With the conditioned phenomena, the yogi gets the unconditioned. This is the reason why Nibbāna is difficult to understand because with the conditions, one attains the unconditioned. It was like digging a cave. During the Second World War, Japanese jet fighter planes came to bomb people. So, they had to dig caves in the mountain area for safety. The cave is not existing in the past, present and future times. It appears by digging. The digging is like seeing impermanence. The rock fragments are candas. The empty cave is like Nibbāna, no candas. The true refuge is unconditioned Nibbāna, here the empty cave. The impermanence and the rock fragments are conditions. The empty cave, Nibbāna, and the rock fragments, candas, are not the same. This was the reason then. Sariputta described Nibbāna as real happiness, because it had no mind and body. The cessation is a presence phenomenon, Atthi. It was like the above simile of empty cave as a true refuge. We cannot know Nibbāna with the feeling of Sankhata by thinking. A human with the thoughts of Tanna, craving, will always be far from Nibbāna. Worldlings do not want Nibbāna because it has nothing for them. Therefore, they are afraid of it. But the Buddha taught Nibbāna in many ways. He asked people to sit for meditation. Asked him to see the arising and passing away phenomena. Only by seeing Dukkha that we do not want it. Nibbāna is unconditioned, asinkata. In Nibbāna, we cannot find the things which belong to the conditioned, sankata. In the Jules Discourse, Ratana Sutta, SNP 2.1 or KHP 7, the following verses were very good examples of Nibbāna. These were, Ended the old, there is no new taking birth. Dispassioned their minds towards further becoming. They with no seed, no desire for growth. The enlightened, go out like this flame. This too, an exquisite treasure in the Sangha. By this truth, may there be well-being. The above verses represented Nibbāna as the cessation of Kalesa and Kanda or Dukkha. Whatever cessation may be, all are not becoming, unbecome. 
Now, we are encountering the perfect and completed teachings, sasana, of the Buddha and should make an effort in practice. It needs a lot of sustained effort to realize Nibbana. The following story was good for contemplation. A monk went to the forest for practice. Without success, he gave up the practice and came back to the monastery. The Buddha knew about it and told him. In his dispensation, Sasana, there were monks with a good reputation in their practices. So, why he wanted the bad reputation of a lazy monk by giving up his practice and coming back? He was a diligent person in one of his past lives. In one of their past lives, the Bodhisattva was the leader of a merchant group. They were traveling in a desert area. It was so hot in the daytime that, they only traveled at night, by following the northern star. One time the guide was fallen into sleep and the group returned to their last camping site. Now they were facing the problem of shortage of water. The Bodhisattva found a plot of earth with grasses overgrown on it. They were trying to dig the ground there. At a depth of 60 armed lengths, 180, they found a slab of rock. They heard the sound of flowing water underneath. Therefore, the Bodhisattva asked a very strong young man to break up the rock. At last, they got the water. This strong young man was this present monk. Dharma and water which one was more valuable? With the attainment of Dharma, he would never die again and peaceful forever. The thirtieth blessing to thirty-third blessings is about Sila, Samadhi, Panna and Nibbana. They are connecting, and also about the Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Path. For fulfilling these blessings, we need to practice the four Satipatthana. This is practicing to know about oneself. Whatever happening in the world, whether it is good or bad or neutral, at last ending up with perishing. We are ignorant about ourselves and the natural law with heedlessness. We practice to know and understand the nature of the kanda. People have the delusion that takes the becoming as pleasurable. Whatever situation they are in always happy with it. This is a craving for becoming. Bhava Tana, and view of eternalism, Sasata Dithi. Some are craving for non-becoming. Vibhava Tana, and view of annihilationism. They crave for it without any knowledge about it. Nibbana means, ni, freedom, liberation, vana, clinging and grasping, vanabhava. Therefore, it means freedom or liberation from clinging and grasping. Beings have the strongest attachment and clinging to themselves, atatana pemam natthi. Some living beings still have attachment to the dharma, dharma raga or dharma nandi, e.g., non-returner, anagami. Therefore, the qualities of Nibbāna are 1. Freedom from attachment is Nibbāna. 2. The best real happiness is Nibbāna. 3. Nibbāna is not in the loka, world, but it transcends it. Loka, the world, is Kandas, Ayatana, Datas, the All. 4. Nibbāna can be seen with the mind, i.e., with the path and fruition mind. The mind cannot function without objects. Therefore, Nibbāna can be known by the realization of it. So, we do not need to debate and argue about it. It is wasting time and never reaching to the point. 5. It can be realized with the four path knowledge, from Sotapati to Arahata Magas. There are two ways to Nibbāna, i.e., Samatha Yanaka and Vipassana Yanaka, based on Samatha and Insight, respectively. There is nothing more important than the ending of Dukkha. Therefore, the Buddha taught that the realization of Nibbāna is the highest protection with a blessing.